I'm Coyote Peterson, and today I'm going to take you behind the scenes at the Ohio Wildlife Center. The Ohio Wildlife Center was founded in 1984 by Dr. Donald Burton, and today I'll be lucky enough to get a first-hand look at how this incredible establishment fosters awareness and appreciation of Ohio's native wildlife through rehabilitation, education, and wildlife health studies. Our first stop would be the Wildlife Hospital. This is where the journey begins for any animal that is in trouble. Well, we must be at the right place because there's no skunks inside the building. We're going to head downstairs and see the rehabilitation process of some of the wild animals that live here in Ohio. Come on, let's go inside and check it out. Pretty excited. <laughs> and help rehabilitate some animals today. Hi, I'm Dr. Melinda Marks and I'm the veterinarian for the Ohio Wildlife Center. Working alongside Dr. Melinda Marks, I was about to get up close with some animals that were recently admitted. Well, I'm the clinical veterinarian here at the Ohio Wildlife Center and I take care of all of the injured, orphaned wildlife that come in and provide any veterinary services that they may need. So surgeries, x-rays, medications, anything that they need prior to release is my job. Great, what sort of stuff are we going to see today? We have quite a full hospital. We have some raptors today, some turtles, and uh, some baby squirrels for you to see. Ooh, everybody loves baby squirrels. And we all know that turtles are my favorite. All right, well, let's head downstairs and uh, start taking care of these animals. It's official. Today I'm going to help rehabilitate some animals. I'm Christy Cromwell. I'm the hospital and pre-release facility director. So what's the first animal that we're going to look at today? Um, we're going to be looking at a raccoon that has a fractured jaw. So we actually have its mouth taped shut so that we're not injuring it any further. And then we have a feeding tube into it. So we're going to bring that raccoon out okay. and then we're going to feed it. Cool. Well, let's bring out the raccoon. With Christy carefully holding this little guy in place, I'm able to give him some delicious milk formula through a feeding tube. Am I going slow enough? You can go a little bit faster. Oh, actually. okay. I don't want it to like shoot out his nose. We all know how easy it is to make milk come out your nose. All right. He's ready to go to sleep now. He is. He's got a <laughs> belly full of milk and it's time for his nap. Not too grouchy now that he's had his food. So the tube that was connected to the end of the syringe, does that go all the way down into his stomach? It does. It's something called an e-tube. So if an animal has an injury where they're unable to eat like a jaw fracture, then we put a feeding tube in so that we can maintain their calorie requirements while they're healing. Hmm, very cool. Next we would take a look at a red-shouldered hawk who's suffering from a broken wing. Yeah, you definitely have to be careful of the talon. So that's the bird's weapon. Yep. Dr. Marks checks to make sure everything is healing properly. Yeah, we definitely want to keep his head covered while, for the most part while we're doing the exam. And then comes my part. More feeding. Mmm, delicious. Hawk food. Only this time it's rat livers. Nothing is more appetizing to a hawk than fresh rat livers. Ooh, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Ready for Putting cut up rodent liver down the throat of a red-shouldered hawk. Bet that's something you haven't done every day. And it's cool to feel the, the meat just kind of build up there in its crop and it's neat how, you know, once you feel it's about the size of a golf ball, you know it's had enough to eat and they'll slowly kind of digest that food. Last, but certainly not least, is probably the most adorable little critter you have ever seen. Holy cow, that is a tiny squirrel. Yeah. Put your camera over here and look at this. You didn't even have any fur yet. It's a baby eastern gray squirrel. Look at that little guy. He's so little, his eyes aren't even open. So how do you feed a baby squirrel? All right, so we feed our squirrels with a syringe and a, and a synthetic nipple on the end. Um, so this guy, what's Is, is that a synthetic weight? squirrel nipple? This is a s synthetic squirrel nipple. Cool. So you can use them for kittens and puppies too. So the squirrels are usually pretty good eaters. So they latch onto it and they take to it pretty well the first couple of times. This is not what I imagined when you said cute. This is like cute times 10. A little warm Pedialyte from an eyedropper and this future tree climber is ready for his nap. Rest well, little squirrel. If I could put you in my pocket and keep you forever, I totally would. But one day, you will return to the wild. So that's how you feed a baby squirrel with a synthetic squirrel nipple. The hospital is where animals come to get fixed up. And before they can return to the wild, they must first recuperate at the pre-release facility. This location allows animals to re-weather, forage for food, and recondition their muscles. 
We aren't allowed to get up close with any of these animals because the goal is to keep them wild. And acclimating to humans, or cameras for that matter, would be exactly the opposite. Today, we actually have a great blue heron that is going to be able to be released back out into the wild, and we're gonna get to be a part of that today, right? Yeah, we do have a heron that I was able to capture yesterday that was entrapped into a restaurant that had an outdoor pool and volleyball court. So we are gonna be able to get that guy back outside today. He was just a little tired after trying to escape the nets of the volleyball courts. While the majority of the animals do make full recoveries and return to the wild, there are a few that will never be able to survive on their own and must now become ambassadors for their species. These animals reside at the education facility, the last stop on our tour, and the place where some incredible Ohio species now live full time and have adapted to being around humans. I'm Barbara Ray, the Wildlife Education Director here at the Ohio Wildlife Center. All right, so we have some animals that uh, are not releasable because they have some sort of permanent disability that prevents them from surviving on their own. And during their rehabilitation process, it becomes apparent that these animals are pretty adaptable to being in captivity. And the purpose of these animals then is to get them up close to people, help people become a little bit more aware of what lives in their neighborhoods, and learn how to peacefully coexist with animals. And really, the best way to help people uh, be able to do that is dispel their fears about these animals and show them that these animals aren't out to get us at all. They're just going about their business just like you and I. So the animals here basically cannot be released back into the wild and they become ambassadors and educational representatives for the work that you guys do here. That's Very right. cool. OWC is a nonprofit organization and every year their incredible staff and countless volunteers work around the clock to treat nearly 5,000 injured, orphaned, or sick wild animals. The Ohio Wildlife Center is open to the public on select days throughout the year. If you're in central Ohio and want to get up close with some of our amazing local species, this is totally the place to do it. I can't thank you guys enough for having us out here today and taking us on the rehabilitation trail. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. If you thought that was an amazing animal encounter, make sure to check out these other videos. And don't forget, subscribe to follow me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail.